Born in Brooklyn. Um, Crown Heights, Bed-Stuy. My father was a longshoreman. He then became a longshoreman and a caterer and a painter so to work three jobs so we can move the family to the much better neighborhood of Coney Island. Absolute, complete disaster. I was a writer selling stuff. My parents, I wrote after everyone went to sleep in my house with a blanket pulled over my head from Shakespeare, Hemingway, and Stan Lee, the three greatest writers in the history of mankind, I lived in another world. Okay? So I get out of there, I come to this school. I'm already like, I picked up on music. I, my parents didn't even know I wanted to be a musician. Before I was 18, I was playing sessions. I taught myself, I did that, that, because I was just obsessed with being as good as I could be. If you're an entrepreneur, you are absolutely a perfectionist. Why? What grade? You in the back. What grade? You take a test. What do you, what, what's the grade you try to get? 100. 100, right? Guess what? What do you try to get? 100. And what about if you get an 89? How do you feel? How bad? 89. A 95, a 99 is usually a lost client. There's only one grade you can get in business. It's got to be not an A, but you got to get 100 all the time. And it was never about money. The other thing probably Ted will tell you is if you chase the money, you're never going to get it. Don't do anything for money. Do it because you love it. Do it because you're passionate about it. So I did music for music. And I happened to make a really decent amount of money, considering I started with 37 and a half cents. So I had this one song that came out perfect. And my contract was up, and I'm sitting with my manager, and I said, we're done. And he goes, what do you mean we're done? And he goes, we're done. What do you mean we're done? Well, I'm going to go, I just went to film school, and you know, I'm going to see where that goes. This is not who I am. This is who I am. This is some stuff I do, right? And what I used to do when I first started about 17 years ago, is I used to do commercials and do sales tapes and do all this video stuff. I won the last ever MTV basement tape contest with a budget of $2,000 and a borrowed camcorder, and I shot it on VHS. Don't ever take no for an answer, and you believe in yourself, and you're like 50% crazy and 50% inspired. No one can stop you, as long as you follow my two rules. One, on my business cards, it says, anything is possible. Part two of that is, if it's logical. You know, nothing's got, I mean, this dream stuff is all BS, right? Your dream is work achieved. It's really that simple. We have a 360 company. It's called HQ, okay? It's called HQ because I started out as a session musician. And I had a percussionist who graduated from Berkeley. And he goes, dude, you're going to be a director. I know you're going to do this advertising thing. If you ever have a company, you need to call it headquarters. Why? Because <laughs> it's going to be like the HQ of all your ideas and all the stuff you do. I go, oh. I got, out, I got the corporation like literally the next day. Doesn't matter really what the product is. People come to us all the time. They come to us really to get to work with me and my staff. Because my, my core staff of, of creative producers, actually my main creative producer is NSC Mendez, who came from what college? Brooklyn College. Uh, my head of production, she started as an intern at the age of 26 because she was fired from the museum. Uh, my head of production, Mauricio Vazquez from Chile, he started as an intern. My president of my live events division started as an intern at over 30. But my core group of creatives are about five people. That doesn't mean when I do a creative meeting, I don't call everyone that works for me into the meeting. Go around the room and ask them their opinions. I don't give mine till the end. Because if I tell them at the beginning, they're probably going to shut up or it'll be like the better idea. But how am I supposed to learn if I don't listen? What we do now more than anything is flagship programming and 10-pole programming for giant brands. I make most of my money going up big advertising agencies. And what Ted said is true. It's about image, presentation, style. Sometimes I walk in, and this is basically my business card, right? I have suits. In fact, when I first went to L.A. to start selling stuff, the insecurity I felt made me quaff my hair, go with custom-made shirts, suits, everything. I mean, I was monogrammed, if you could believe it. When I go into meetings sometimes with big corporations, I bring a suit just as a joke. They think that the person I'm bringing is me. And I usually start by saying absolutely nothing. And I start out by listening. The most important thing you're going to leave from what Ted's saying is like presentation, 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 but listening. You know, whether it's Conan O'Brien, whether it's in the Jurassic Park days of, of Johnny Carson, whether it's David Letterman, the best thing they do is listen. For what I do, when I consider a client, I never think initially about the bottom line. I think about the relationship. And first, learn the playing field. Learn what they want. Ask them first thing. Ask your customers what's a win for them. In my business, 
I know when I pretty much want to pitch them, half the time it changes that minute because they tell me something I don't know really. You know, I think I know, but until they teach me, I don't know anything, right? So it changes. Be adaptable. Wrapping up my story, it's anything is possible if it's logical, right? If you really can hit the life lotto and find someone that's a great partner that'll be with you and like keep you pumped up at the right times, that's good. Otherwise, be your own best friend and no one can tell you no. Just work harder. I had a feeling. That-